Hi, and welcome back. In today's episode, we're going to take a look at how you can enhance your playbooks using REST API. Using the REST API action in playbooks is a great way to call Nutanix APIs to enrich your playbooks with extra details, and is also a great way to integrate external APIs to allow you to integrate other tools into your automation workflow. Let's take a look at an example of how we can do both of these. So I've set up a playbook here to show us an example of how we can use these REST APIs. Let's go ahead and open that up. And so I'm going to trigger this playbook using a, the alert trigger for my VM memory being constrained. And what, what I'd like to do here is I'd like to go ahead and actually first, once I detect the VM has been constrained, I want to get some additional information out of that uh, VM. So I'm going to use uh, the uh, initial REST API action here to call to a Prism Central API and extract out some more information about the VM. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use uh, get um, on the V3 VM's request here um, in the Prism Central. And if you notice here, I actually filled in the uh, IP address. Instead of filling in the IP address, I just filled in localhost here. Um, Crossplay will resolve this IP address for me at runtime. And this is really great because once I do this, I can actually export this playbook to other environments without having to re-hard code the IP in each environment. So I like to use this because it's a really convenient way to do that. Um, and I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the UUID of the VM that's triggered this alert. So we can go ahead and do a lookup on that VM and get some more information. The last part is I just need to fill in my username and password and we're all set to go to make that API request. Now the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to use a string parser action here and for a little bit more information about the string parser action you can watch the previous episode. Last week's episode I went into more details about that but basically I'm just going to use this to extract the IP address out of that initial REST API request that I made um, for the VM that has triggered this workflow. And so in my third step, now I'm going to use one more REST API query, but instead of calling to a Prism Central API, I'm actually going to call to an external endpoint. And so this is how I'm going to incorporate other tools that I may have here. What I'm going to be doing here is I'll be calling to my third party ticket system and I'm going to be generating a ticket, letting the operators know that there is a VM that's been detected as constrained, and we'll also fill in some additional metadata, uh, with, including that IP address that we pulled out in the first two steps here. So um, for this, I'm going to do a post request, and I'm going to fill in the URL of that ticket system that I use. And using the request body field, I'm able to pass in the request body that I'd like to use. So it's going to give some details about the VM, the alert that triggered this, and then I'm also going to pass in this extra field with the, the string parser parse string, which is going to be that IP address so I can enrich the metadata that I'm sending over to my ticketing system. So I triggered an alert, and let's go take a look at what happened. We can click into the details here, and we can see that it looks like everything executed successfully. And now we can take a look at the ticketing system and it looks like that ticket was created successfully for the Microsoft SQL server that I have, passing the IP address. And for a little bit, any more details about what actually happened, we can come through here. We can see the response that we got from that first API, the string that we pulled out, and we can also see all of the details about the request and the response of that second API query we made. I hope this showed you how easy it is to include REST APIs in your playbooks. Uh, there's no code required, and it's a great way to integrate other tools into your automation workflows. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more episodes on how to make your IT operations efficient.